afternoon, Roy. Are you hearing anything through your stream? Check one, two. Hey, hey. One, two, two, two. Test check. Ha, ha. Mm. No, 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 no. no, you don't want me to do that. Pardon? You don't want me to do that. <laughs> Check. Hit one, two. Mm, if a picture paints a thousand words. Right on.
actually at the first first refers. Because <laughs> you're like, yeah, we need to hear each of those sixteenth notes. I feel so disappointed with Russian or I mean Okay, okay. Oh yeah, actually it is. <laughs>
Božjo gishi mene to, nok mesak, mesho mesak, chi miigwech mino bamar zuen for this beautiful day that we have today. Niji miigwenek nindigo, wajash nindo dem, ani zadakun nindoji. This is an honor song for a good path that we're walking upon today. I say chi miigwech to everyone for being here. <laughs> beautiful day. Uh -huh. Woo! You can stand or sit or kneel, whichever you wish, and address your deity in your own terms. Hi, Jean. <laughs> um, I can make it really short and say, what she say? She said it all for me. That's good. Bojo, wache, sego, washte. Greetings, earthlings. For those of you that have come from far and wide, thank you for making it here, making this day special. I ask the Creator a blessing on all those who have come and have safe travel here and back home. But particularly at this time, for the young people that are gathered here and for our very special guest, who is a fixture in NHL scene, Don. He didn't bring his colorful partner with him. <laughs> so, Creator, I say thank you for this opportunity to have this very special day. I ask that everything go well. Hold off the Thunderbirds, Nibki, Panacea, until after we've had something to eat and everybody's quiet and down and we can go on. But most of all, Creator, I ask a blessing on Ron McLean for his many years of good work in the hockey and for what he has done for Canada. I thank you, Creator. Say, Jimmy Gwich, I wish you not. We are gathered this morning to celebrate as Dr. Moira McPherson is installed as the seventh President and Vice Chancellor of Lakehead University. We also take this opportunity to acknowledge the various contributions of Ron McLean as we confer an honorary degree. And finally, we wish to recognize the Academic All Canadian Athletic Student Awards. Today provides us with an opportunity to acknowledge and be grateful for the ways in which these individuals have and continue to enhance the lives of others. We ask God to bless their days, to provide them with wisdom and insight that ensure their decisions are sincere, just, and constructive. 
May each of them know and depend on the support of family, friends, and colleagues. May wholesome health and abundant blessings be their constant companion. Amen. I hereby declare this very special ceremony of convocation open. Madam Chancellor, Madam President McPherson, distinguished guests, faculty and staff, students, family and friends, welcome to Lakehead University on this very special occasion on behalf of our entire community. I'm delighted to welcome everyone to the installation of Lakehead University's seventh president and vice chancellor, as well as the conferral of an honorary degree. My name is Dr. David Barnett, and I am the Interim Provost and Vice President Academic here at Lakehead University. To begin, I would like to acknowledge the original custodians of this land and to pay my respect to the elders, past, present, and future, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture, and the hopes of indigenous peoples. I would also like to recognize that we are on the traditional land of Fort William First Nation, signatory to the Robinson Superior Treaty Territory of 1850. I also acknowledge the history and the many nations holding this area and look forward to respectful relations with the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit in the spirit of reconciliation. It is now my privilege to introduce the members of the platform party for today's ceremony along with distinguished guests. We'd like to extend our sincere thanks to those of you that traveled from far distances across the country that you, for you to attend here today. I'd ask that you please rise when your name is called or the area that you represent. Madam Lynn McLeod, Chancellor, Lakehead University. Dr. Moira McPherson, President and Vice Chancellor, Lakehead University. Dr. Gautam Das, Mace Bearer. Mr. Sean Sphere, Lakehead University alumnus and member of the Lakehead University Board of Governors. Mr. Ron McLean, honorary degree recipient. Mr. Tom Warden, Director of Athletics. Mr. David Tamlin, Chair, Lakehead University Board of Governors. Chief Peter Collins, Fort William First Nation. Elder Jerry Martin. Sister Alice Greer, University Chaplain. Dr. Bob Rosehart, past president, Lakehead University. Dr. Brian Stevenson, past president, Lakehead University. Ms. Kathleen Lynch, President, Confederation College. Dr. Roger Strasser, CEO and Dean of Northern Ontario School of Medicine. Mr. Brent Tukane, Chief Executive Officer, Seven Generation Education Institute. Dr. Michelle Beaulieu, President, Lakehead University Alumni Association. Mr. Farhan Youssef, Acting President, Lakehead University Student Union. Dr. Marion Alexander, Professor, University of Manitoba. Dr. Wendy Bedingfield, Professor Emeritus, Acadia University. Dr. Connie Bothwell, Professor Emeritus, University of New Brunswick. Dr. Pierre Gervais, Professor Emeritus, University of Alberta. Dr. Jane Watkinson, Professor Emeritus, University of Alberta. Dr. Cynthia Wesley Eskimo, Chair of Truth and Reconciliation. Dr. Jean Jobin Vevins, Principal, Aurelia Campus. Dr. Andrew Dean, Vice President, Research and Innovation. Ms. Deb Camusi, Vice President, External Relations. Ms. Kathy Pazahan, 
Vice President, Finance and Administration. Ms. Barb Eccles, General Counsel and University Secretary. Dr. Kim Federson, past Principal of Aurelia Campus and Professor Emeritus. Dr. Chandra Shahi, Dean, Faculty of Graduate Studies. Dr. Ulf Renison, Dean, Faculty of Natural Resource Management. Dr. Todd Randall, Dean, Faculty of Science and Environmental Studies. Dr. John O'Meara, Dean, Faculty of Education. Dr. Tony Gillies, Acting Dean, Faculty of Engineering. Dr. Betsy Birmingham, Dean, Faculty of Social Science and Humanities. And now if, if I could ask everyone to stand for Lakehead University Board of Governors, please. The Board of Governors, please stand, sorry. <laughs> Wow. And if the, thank you, Board of Governors, if the fellows of Lakehead University would please stand. Thank you, fellows. If the past honorary degree recipients would please stand. Thank you. And finally, all Lakehead University senators, faculty, and staff, if you would please stand. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. It's now my pleasure, Madam Chancellor, to introduce Chief Peter Collins from Fort William First Nation, who will offer greetings. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Oh, hey, good morning. All right, have a nap then. Okay, just uh, good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, respected elders. Uh, I, I, it's been a long time since I've been around. I know uh, I first got elected in 1998, and I remember Fred Gilbert, uh, the, the former president of the university, he said, just wear your regalia. And then back in 1998, I was still young, and I had cowboy boots and a T-shirt. That was my regalia. But uh, first of all, I want to bring greetings on behalf of my community members. Uh, we're 2,500 strong. Uh, we've uh, con contributed to the land, contributed to the territory, and we, we built positive relationships. Uh, Ron, uh, I know you're a hockey Jew. I'm a Toronto Maple Leaf Jew too. So uh, I, I reminded Ron of uh, his visit here to, to recognize the contribution of our community and the commitment of First Nation people all across this land. To Moyer, uh, congratulations uh, on your uh, recognition as the seventh uh, president of this organization. Moyer and I got off the wrong foot, but uh, we continue to work and build positive relationships. And I, I continue to, I will continue as the leader of my community to work and help the university grow and prosper because education is an uh, integral part of our community. We must instill that in our young people. We must make sure to get the greatest education possible to be successful in a world that's struggling right now. And uh, there's a lot of many different issues out in our territories. So we need to work together. And I will continue to work with this university, continue to support this university as long as I'm a leader in our community. On behalf of the community members I represent, they told me to only talk for a minute, but I try. But on behalf of the community members I represent, and all of you, all my trees, brothers and sisters, welcome to the beautiful land of Fort Wayne. We wish. Thank you, Chief Collins. The installation of a new president marks a special occasion and something to celebrate. To share a few words about our new president, I have the pleasure to introduce Sean Spear. Mr. Spear is a sessional instructor and a senior fellow in public policy at the University of Toronto's Monk School of Global Affairs and Public Policy. Previously, Sean held several distinguished roles within the federal government, and he has been cited by the Hill Times as one of the most influential people in politics and government in Canada, and by Embassy Magazine as one of the top 80 people influencing Canadian foreign policy for his work. Originally from Thunder Bay, Sean is also a proud Lakehead University alumnus.
Thank you. Uh, it's an honor to participate in today's ceremony, and not just because I get to fulfill a boyhood dream to meet Ron McLean. It's principally because I owe a great debt to this institution and the remarkable people that animate it. Lakehead University changes lives. It's an audacious claim, I know, but I also know from experience that it's true. My time here has shaped who I am and how I think. Every subsequent twist and turn in my career and my life starts with the knowledge, experiences, perspective, and relationships that I accumulated during those formative four years here. Lakehead University changed my life. And I'm confident that it will continue to change lives under the steady, capable, and inspired leadership of Dr. Moira McPherson. Dr. McPherson, as many of you know, has been a member of the Lakehead University community for more than 30 years, is a professor of biomechanics and kinesiology, a faculty director, associate vice president, deputy provost, and most recently, provost and vice president academics. She's also served as the chair of the board of directors of the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, where she's now the vice chair, member of the board of directors of the Thunder Bay Regional Health Research Institute, and as a member of the Ontario University's Council on Quality Assurance over this period. But these titles and roles fail, fail to fully capture her immense contribution to the university, the communities of Thunder Bay and Aurelia, and of course the students, faculty, staff, and others who she's touched. The evidence, and the evidence of her contribution and leadership is all around us. During her time as provost and vice president academic, Dr. McPherson advanced a strategic vision for the university, including stronger academic and community connections, and institutional recruitment and partnerships, as well as new program development, accreditations, and resource allocation. Her time in this role has been marked by growth, dynamism, and optimism. But what really distinguishes Dr. McPherson is her passion for Lakehead University and what it represents. She believes deeply in its mission of inclusion and opportunity and the peoples whose lives are being changed here every day. In sum, Dr. McPherson uniquely understands what makes this place, to borrow from our tagline, exceptional and unconventional. Now, before I introduce her, I want to read some brief remarks from our former chancellor, Derek Burney, who couldn't be here today. Derek has long been a mentor to both Moira and me, and his note, characteris his note is characteristically insightful and eloquent. He writes, hearty congratulations, Moira, as you begin to serve as the president and vice chancellor of Lakehead University. I'm thrilled and excited to see you take up these new responsibilities and have every confidence that you will lead with verve, civility, and resolve. The board, the faculty, the administration, and most importantly, the students, are fortunate to have you at the helm. Best personal regards from, join, from Joan and me. We are indeed lucky to have you at the helm, and I'm lucky to be able to introduce you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce you to Lakehead University's seventh and newest president and vice chancellor, Dr. Maura McPherson. Morning. Madam Chancellor, as the Chair of the Bo University Board of Governors, I have the honor to present to you Dr. Moira McPherson. On behalf of the Board of Governors of Lakehead University, I ask you to install Moira McPherson as the seventh President and Vice Chancellor of Lakehead University. I'd like to you now for the audience to please rise. Do you, Moira McPherson, pledge yourself to perform the duties of the President and Vice Chancellor of Lakehead University as described by the statutes of the University? And do you promise to defend the rights and to promote the welfare of the University and the members thereof? I do so promise. In the name of Lakehead University, I now install you, Moira, Moira McPherson, in the office of the President and Vice Chancellor of the University and I invest you with the authority 
and charge you with the responsibility pertaining to that office. Bonjour, bonjour, and good morning. Before I start with my remarks, I would like to first thank Sister, Al El Sister Alice, Elder Martin, for their invocation. I'd like to thank Audrey for her amazing honor song. Chief Collins, we greatly appreciate your welcome for Fort William First Nations. And sincere thank you to you, Sean, for your very kind introductory words. Madam Chancellor, members of the platform party, board of governors, special guests, faculty, staff, and students, my friends and family. It's an honor and a privilege to stand before you today as your newest president and vice chancellor of Lakehead University. I am also thrilled to be sharing this celebration weekend with Lakehead's honoring of Mr. Ron McLean. My past positions as provost and most recently as the interim president have been exciting and fulfilling, but they were also weighty roles with many long days and nights and weeks. And they have impacted on my family and I could not have taken on these roles without the incredible support of my husband, Mark. Now Mark, before, besides being a geologist extraordinaire, he is also a most serious hockey fan. And I feel that sharing the stage today with Mr. Ron McLean somehow helps to make up for the numerous interruptions <laughs> to his hockey viewing pleasure that have resulted from my work at Lakehead University. 31 years ago, I arrived to make my home in Thunder Bay, and I started my career just a little to the left of here in the field house. I have lived, loved, and breathed my Lakehead academic and leadership career here for all of those years, 
I'm passionate about the strengths that Lakehead offers as a comprehensive Canadian university, as well as a vital member of the economic, social, and cultural communities that we support and that support us. This ceremony today here in this hangar with a special focus on the value of sport and with our student athletes and my kinesiology colleagues is particularly meaningful to me. An installation ceremony is an opportunity offered to me as the new president to share with you the direction we are headed, my vision and my commitment to serve Lakehead. However, I would be remiss if I didn't lead with this very important note. There is no magic spell that will help us navigate the white waters of the post-secondary sector in Ontario. When our children were younger, our family enjoyed the Harry Potter books and movies. In the Prisoner of Azkaban movie, Harry boards the night bus on his way to King's Cross and the bus conductor, actually a suspended head, yells, take it away, Ernie, it's going to be a bumpy ride. The bus lurches forward at a breathtaking speed, maneuvering obstacles and strange terrain in a thrilling and truly frightening sort of way. That scene captures how I and many of my post-secondary colleagues feel when we think about our roles leading in these uncertain political and economic times. Across the province, universities face challenges including managing enrollment, <clears throat> changing demographics, and this is particularly true in the North and in Simcoe County. We know that achieving optimal student enrollment will be a key to staying true to the goals and to making the changes that are needed. As a regional comprehensive university with two campuses, we will always feel pressured to deliver breadth in programming while at the same time developing the authentic depth of scholarship and experience that sets our students apart. In a new groundbreaking report by the Royal Bank of Canada on the skills economy, CEO Dave McKay states, the next generation is entering the workforce at a time of profound economic, social, and technological change. Paul Davidson, who heads Universities Canada, identifies that the role of universities responding to this challenge is to build resilient, persevering young people who are fluent in cultural diversity. I believe we need to work together across disciplines and with our partners to address design and delivery options that will prepare our learners, young and mature, to move back and forth between and among post-secondary credentials and jobs. So where are we headed? I also wanted to speak today about our new strategic plan. As we work to build on the significant successes of my predecessors, Drs. Rosehart, Gilbert, and most recently, Dr. Brian Stevenson, our new strategic plan gives us the detailed roadmap to get us where we need to go. Our mission to be an innovative, comprehensive university that provides an education that is about how to think, not what to think, is increasingly relevant in today's society. An overarching theme of Lakehead's strategic plan is to embrace our role in creating future leaders and continue to engage with the communities that surround our campuses. We will achieve this by continuing to prioritize high caliber research and learning and by building strong local, global and indigenous partnerships that champion equity and access. Lakehead University has one of the highest proportions of Indigenous students among Ontario universities at approximately 13% of our total enrollment. We have a nationally recognized and an authentic commitment to these students enshrined in our new strategic plan priorities. We believe in a vibrant Indigenous presence woven into the fabric of this university. We are listening to our Indigenous leaders their words have created opportunities to strengthen our relationships, 
to build on our continuing efforts to bring Indigenous content into our curriculum, to establish positive cultural and social places, and to implement welcoming policies and practices at both of our campuses. Our new strategic plan articulates our commitment to all Lakehead students through the development of increased resources to support student health and well-being inside and outside the classroom, as well as increasing opportunities for innovation, hands-on, and international learning experiences. We will continue to build on our successes in attracting international students, as well as students in short cultural and language programs. We are augmenting the opportunities for faculty, researchers, and students to benefit from a global living and learning experience. Our commitment to local and global partnerships focuses on nurturing existing alliances and new collaborations. Lakehead Aurelia continues to be a bold and innovative venture. With Georgian College, we are expanding programming and research to raise the average post-secondary participation rate. Nurturing strong collaborations with Confederation College and with Oshki Wenjek and Seven Generations Aboriginal Institute will expand and enhance accessibility in Northwestern Ontario and the Northern Ontario School of Medicine delivers a distinctive model of distributed and socially accountable medical education, and this will continue to be supported as a labor of love by both Lakehead and Laurentian. Over the next five years, there is an opportunity for Lakehead and each of these institutions to model post-secondary education that is powerful and responsive to the changing needs of an increasingly diverse body of learners and to the needs of our regions. We live and work in two spectacularly beautiful landscapes that uniquely position us to achieve our strategic goals. Last week, I spoke for the first time as president at Lakehead Aurelia. I highlighted the wonderful countryside, the lakes, the local bounty, and how they contribute to the unique and important lakehead identity that we are building in Simcoe County. You only need to fly over the Sleeping Giant or Mount McKay on a clear day to appreciate the splendor of this region in all four of our seasons. The reason I mention the physical beauty is to highlight how important I believe it is that we take advantage of all the benefits that both our campuses offer in terms of the aesthetic, the community connections, and the resulting learning advantages. There is a richness in our daily lives that can enhance the learning and living experiences of our students more fully. Last year, Mr. Sean Spear, expressed in the Globe and Mail that Thunder Bay's strengths lie in its people who are overwhelmingly good, decent, and caring. They want better lives for their children, a better future for their community, and for all its citizens. At Lakehead, we play an important role in making that happen. And we will work with our cities and our region's leaders to more effectively reflect the richness of our communities and our environment. As your new president, my vision weaves innovation and discovery, pathways and partnerships, and into a new physical and virtual presence that is the lakehead of our future. I want to bring a greater openness and a transparency to the way we lead and work at together at this university. My colleague at McGill University, Dr. Suzanne Fortier, referenced Professor Mintzberg, who asked, what could be more natural than to treat our organizations not as mystical hierarchies of authority, but as communities of engagement, where every member is respected and so returns that respect? I'm committed to foster and champion innovation and entrepreneurial approaches from the micro 
the little things that make the daily experience of faculty and staff more effective, to the macro changes that will continue to build on our successes. And our ticket to success is continuing to offer the best possible learning experience in class, on campus, and online. I am here today due to the support of so many, but I would like to particularly acknowledge my own academic advisors and supervisors who have inspired me and have traveled far to attend this celebration. Dr. Connie Bothwell, Dr. Wendy Bedingfield, and Dr. Pierre Gervais, and Dr. Jane Watkinson. I know that without your guidance, patience, and encouragement all those years ago, I wouldn't have been where I am today. I also want to extend my deep appreciation to our excellent and supportive Board of Governors and to our Chair, Mr. David Tamblin. Thank you to my friends and family, and in particular to my wonderful mom, husband and daughters, and my in-laws for their love. Collectively, they make me a better person and they help me to remember not to sweat the small stuff. As I was writing my remarks, I did realize, sadly, that that still leaves a lot of big stuff to worry about. <laughs> As president, I begin my term with a strong and dedicated executive team. I thank my talented colleagues, faculty, staff, and student leaders across the university who have brought Lakehead this far and continue to help push us onward and upward. And thank you to all the alumni and donors who are there with us every step of the way. I look forward to continuing to serve this university with vim and vigor. And certainly Sean and Chancellor Emeritus, uh, Derek Burney with verve, civility and resolve. We know that it's going to continue to be a bumpy ride, but with the bumps come opportunities for us to develop Lakehead University's strengths and vitality together. Thank you. Merci. Chimigwitch. Congratulations, Madam President. Today we are also proud to honor another exceptional individual. The university confers honorary degrees, which symbolizes the highest honor that can be bestowed on an individual by the university senate. Madam Chancellor, it is my honor to introduce Mr. Tom Morton, who will introduce our honorary degree recipient. Thank you. I'm very honored today to be introducing Ron McLean as an honorary degree recipient. A recipient who is an iconic and vital part of our diverse and complex Canadian culture. Ron is well known for his role on Hockey Night in Canada, a show that has been a staple for all Canadians and a backdrop for many of our memories and for our experiences. Mr. McLean is a modern day raconteur who, when he tells us a story, connects and threads us together as Canadians. He weaves a narrative which has become our national tapestry. A narrative that is truthful, loving and caring. Each Saturday night, he skillfully makes this coalition of memories truly a part 
of our Canadiana. We are very honoured today to call Ron McLean a Thunderwolf and to officially make him part of the Lakehead University family. Please welcome now, back to the podium, our President Moira McPherson to commence with the official honorary degree process. Madam Chancellor, I now have the honor to conduct my first order of ceremonial business. It is my great privilege and pleasure to request on behalf of the Senate of Lakehead University that you confer on Mr. Ron McLean the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I admit you, Ron McLean, to the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. I, I now invite Dr. Ron McLean to address the convocation. I think he needs no invitation. <laughs> Miigwech. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thank you, President McPherson. Tom was an old hockey player. I refereed at Fort William Gardens in the early 1990s when he played for Bill McDonald and the uh, Colonial and United Hockey League teams, and that was a pretty impressive work for an old hockey player, I have to say. That's great, Tom. Uh, Chief Collins, great Toronto Maple Leaf fan. I want you to know that this is a bit of a secret. Uh, you're a great Leaf NHL follower and uh, Coach's Corner fan, and you were asking me about my colorful partner. I've al always secretly held the feeling that uh, Don Cherry should see a doctor. <laughs> so this is really good. <laughs> this is a break. Where to go? Um, first of all, uh, Lynn McLeod reminds me so much of the essence of, uh, I'll talk a little bit about teamwork, obviously it's great, I met uh, Dylan Donnelly and Asia Vass, uh, the Thunder Wolves captains yesterday at a, and Farhan, president of the Students' Union at a little get together and it was just so great to think about team, uh, teams are formed, characters formed in the buses, in the dressing room, just as it is in the classroom and on campus and uh, I have a very special uh, thought to connect being a Thunder Wolf to uh, being a humble Bronco in just a moment, but first for Lynn, she won her leadership nomination on the fifth ballot. It was an incredible battle, and Lynn always said in all of her uh, career, it was the toughest thing she went through because here were a bunch of like-minded souls who were suddenly uh, duking it out. Uh, you did an amazing job, Lynn. You won on the fifth that by nine votes. It's a super inspiring thing, and it's because of the way you've been for this past 24 hours with me and Carrie, my wife Carrie who's also a, a lovely hockey player. Uh, Lynn is just uh, everything that community or team should be. She makes you feel welcome and at ease immediately. Uh, she's ready to serve. Uh, she's ready to grow. She's ready to be humble, to be respectful, and to collaborate. And that's really the nuts and bolts of what makes a successful university or a successful hockey team. And you're the epitome of that, Chancellor McLeod. So it's just great to spend time with you. and. Moira is a figure skater. Above all that she's done, I, you know, I, she's a great, uh, obviously in kinesiology and in biomechanics, uh, a great leader and visionary and teacher, uh, but she's a figure skater. And I wanted to tell you a story about collaboration, Moira. I've got a lot. I got to work with Kurt Browning, maybe the greatest skater ever. Uh, he was unbelievable to me when we did the Battle of the Blades television show. I couldn't hear the downbeats and the music to save my soul. I used to be a disc jockey when I was young, and I thought I knew music, but God, we would choreograph our little number. We would always have a great production opening for the Battle of the Blades TV show, and we would take it to the choreographer, Sandra Bezik, and she said, that's beneath you. We used to call Sandra Fun Be Gone, 
because everything Kurt and I came up with, she would uh, downplay. But at the 2002 Olympics in Salt Lake City, Jamie Soleil and David Pelche, world champions, were favored to win the gold in pairs. And it's kind of a cool quirk. I always look for a little metaphor or a sign about how things work, how uh, they are maybe unusual. Uh, our pairs and dance teams, as a rule, never skate together in warm-up. It's really interesting. Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, two gold medals. They don't skate together in warm-up. Barb Underhill, Paul Martini, I worked a lot with Paul and Barb, didn't skate together in warm-up prior to winning the World Championships in Ottawa in the early 1980s. And Jamie Soleil and David Pelche do not skate together in warm-up. And so at Salt Lake City, they were warming up. David was down at the far end of the arena, and Jamie Soleil was coming through center ice. She wanted to do a double toe loop just to get her feet under her because she knew that she and David would have to do a combination triple toe loop as part of the start of their long program. And as she came through center ice, she did not see the Russian arch rivals, Anton Sigurdlitsi and Elena Bereshnaya, skating together through the other direction. And there was an enormous collision at center ice, and Anton's legs are the size of this rostrum, and he took Jamie down in a thud, an incredible, sickening thud that everybody in the arena heard. It was unbelievable to experience. And the minute it happened, he left Elena, Anton, and he got down to pick her up. He had his arms around Jamie Soleil and Pelche skating into the scene, doesn't know what's happened. And I just remember so vividly what a great moment of sportsmanship it was. Jamie didn't look up and say, you big jerk, what are you doing? I'm trying to go for gold here. And he just held her. And I don't know if Elena was impressed that Anton was holding Jamie, but it was a really, really touching moment. And we didn't have uh, Judge Eccles. Barb Eccles wasn't one of the judges in figure skating at the Olympics in Salt Lake. So we had a bit of corruption going on. And uh, as a result, the IOC chose to award both Soleil and Pelche and Sigurd Litsi and Bereshnaya gold medals. That's the only time it's ever happened. But again, it's a sign, right? Collaboration. Two who come from apart in the warm-up suddenly get it together. They come together just as uh, your liberals would have had to have done back in the early 90s. Uh, that's kind of how it works. Is uh, you, you don't get to pick your teammates. Sometimes you don't even get to pick your partner in pairs or dance figure skating. Somebody smarter maybe knows this is going to work. Uh, we don't get to pick our neighbors but we do get to work together. And it's, uh, I'm reading Tanya Talaga's book right now, Seven Feathers Fallen, and uh, she talks about you know, the lack of communication in her initial conversations, just as you were just saying, uh, Peter, about when you and Moira got together, and you're trying to get on the same page, or trying to discuss things, it's often so confusing. Uh, it's so important. And the, the greatest lesson for me, uh, obviously in Thunder Bay, Terry Fox, his run ended in 1980, August the 31st, and we have the monument here, and we always think about how Terry connected us. Uh, his legacy is forevermore. Uh, it's, it's an incredible example of what an effort, you know, Carl Subban was honored as part of the alumni. I should mention uh, the whole thing that we did yesterday at Lakehead University was just so beautiful. But Carl, he had heard the story of Terry Fox. How did you ever run a marathon a day starting April 12th in St. John's, Newfoundland? He said, I didn't run a marathon a day. I just ran to the next telephone pole. And when I got to that telephone pole, I ran to the next telephone pole. And that's how bit by bit uh, we do get through that little bumpy ride. And Fox was an example. The humble Broncos is the new example. Uh, talking to uh, Asia and talking to Dylan yesterday, I, I was telling them about Braden Camrood, about leadership. When Don Sherry and I went to visit the Broncos 36 hours after the crash, the crash happened on April the 6th, and we went out to Royal University Hospital in Victoria. And I was met with the parents first of all, and I told the parents, because I'd done a lot of work with Canadian Paraplegic Association, I visited every rehab center in the country with spinal cord injury victims, and I just said, look, I know this isn't going to even register right now, and you don't want to hear it right now, but three of you have boys that have spinal cord injuries, I promise you. They're going to have incredibly productive, full lives. It's, uh, it sounds bleak. It's not. It's, uh, it's really an amazing thing how you're able to adapt uh, and regenerate. And you will, you, will, you will see your boy is going to have an amazing life. So I want you to know that without even knowing which parents were parents of the sons who had the spinal cord injuries. And I remember Don Cherry, was, you know, he was ready to faint. He was sweating. He was red. He was all, we were hurt. We were shocked. And he was saying, Ron, you're not a priest, you know sister you'd get a kick out of that because he was he was he was just saying let's just go visit the boys and I, I got to get out of here uh, 
and we went in and we first of all met Ryan Strachnitsky from Airdrie, who's one of the boys paralyzed, and he's unbelievable. I was just with him two nights ago in Innisfail, Alberta. He's playing sledge hockey now. Has that athlete's ability, right? It's kind of special we're in the hangar. Sports medicine is such a big part of the soul of this building, this structure. As Crocodile Dundee says, you don't go back to someone's house because you like the furniture. You go back because you like the people. And David McKee, I'd have, I don't know if I've met Dr. McKee yet, but two decades in ER. It's very special to go into ICU and to know what it must have been like in emergency that night. Ironically, the Swift Current Broncos had a crash in 86 and four boys perished. The first responder was an RCMP officer, Bob Harrowman. His daughter was in charge of triage the night of this Humboldt Broncos crash, April the 6th. And I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they saved 13 lives because honestly, we walked into the ICU and it was like we met six or seven Frankensteins. Everybody was swollen and sewn and broken and uh, it was just so bloody inspiring. And so Strachnitsky's the first guy I meet. Then I went over and held the hand of Dana Bronze, the trainer who would die within 12 hours. And her mom is holding the right hand and I'm holding the trainer Dana's left hand. And her mom said, I got two girls, both have brown eyes, but this is my brown eyed girl and I never forget it. And then I went over to meet, we thought Parker Tobin, there was a misidentification situation. It was a Xavier LaBelle and thank God Xavier who was so, so injured. Uh, he's alive and well, and that's the good part of that story. And uh, met Jacob Wasserman's parents. He's paralyzed. Uh, you can imagine, right? So then we move up to the next floor, and there's a boy named Braden Camroot who's in a better condition. And he immediately gets out of his bed to take Don Cherry and me to meet Caleb Dahlgren and Matthew Gamersick and Derek Patter. He actually starts walking us around, and in a private moment, Braden Camroot says, You know, Ron, our coach Darcy Hogan was incredible, our president Kevin Geringer. But our guy is our captain, Logan Schatz. We all adore Logan who died in the crash. And he says, I want to play next year and I want to play like Logan Schatz. And I thought to myself, I wonder what kind of a hockey player this Braden Camroot is. And then in Vegas during the Stanley Cup, they came to visit and Braden was there. And the night before at a little dinner reception we had and on hockey night in Canada, he was incredible. And I thought, honestly, this kid's Shakespeare. He can't be much of a hockey player. He's reading or he's learning to speak. Uh, he can't be that good. And then a week ago Wednesday, the Humboldt Broncos played their first game, and I got to see Braden Camrood play hockey for the first time, and he was unbelievable. He, he was dominant. He was the first star of the game. At one point, the only two players that are able to play this year, Derek Patter and Braden, were on a 2-0 breakaway. They almost scored, but it was magic just to see. I, you know, you watch that whole night hurt, uh, but so incredibly happy for what this team represents. How could a Junior A franchise in rural Saskatchewan, have a president, a coach, an assistant coach cross from York University, a captain, and a group of men and women that are so otherworldly good. Uh, it's kind of like Lakehead University. It's kind of like Thunder Bay, right? It's, uh, so when I, when I think of the uh, Broncos, I think of that, they announced the 29 communities struck by the accident. It wasn't just Humboldt. All these kids came from somewhere, right? So that Bronco sweater that you pull on and you become whatever it is that they have, I feel, I was telling everyone yesterday, I feel like Carrie and I will have the Thunder Wolves kit. We'll be able to be, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't say this too audacious and too foolish, but if I ever get another invite, I don't think I'll accept another invite to a degree. I want to be a Thunder Wolf because of the beautiful moccasins that Sheila made me uh, with my Thunder Wolf logo. I want to feel that same feeling that Terry Fox created, that the Humboldt Broncos created, and that the Lakehead uh, Thunderwolves create. It, it is truly a, a very special thing that you have going here. And I'll close with just saying, because of what you said, Moira, about the bumpy ride on uh, Harry Potter's you know, journey and wondering where are we headed. Uh, and I should have thought, I should have read about this. Uh, there's two sort of metaphors for me. Robert Frost, the great poet. Robert Frost always said, American guy with roots in the UK, but he always said if he knew the ending to one of his poems in advance of writing it, it was always a terrible poem. So that's important to know. You start writing, you start being president, uh, you're on the journey, and you don't worry too, too much about where you're headed. And that's what you just said, Moira. So that's very, as he says at the close of the poem, I wish I had it off the top of my head, but the gist of it is two roads converged in the yellow wood, and I chose the road less traveled. And that made all the difference, right? And so that's one thing to think about. And then the other thing to think about is just uh, this beautiful uh, uh, concept of night moves by Bob Seeger. Uh, I woke last night to the sound of thunder. How far off I sat and wondered. With autumn closing in, 
It arrives tonight at uh, around 10 o'clock, Autumn. So I just think, always I'll think, how far off is the thunder? It's not far at all. It's right here in my heart. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Miigwech. Merci beaucoup. Congratulations, Dr. McLean. A ceremony like today wouldn't be complete without celebrating our students. At Lakehead, we believe our students make Lakehead different. Today is also an opportunity for us to celebrate and recognize our student athletes who have achieved success both in the classroom and in their sport. Each year, we honor and pay tribute to a very special member of the Lakehead Athletics family. Our John Zanata Alumni Games, named in honor of our great basketball player and great person who gave so much at Lakehead before he left us too soon. His number 30 jersey rests on the wall of the Thunderdome as the only one ever to be retired. He is also remembered through the John Zanata Scholarships, presented to one male and one female athlete every year. His loving wife, Marella, is here today to present the Zanata Scholarships. I'd like to congratulate Nicholas Burke and Lily Gruber Schultz as this year's recipients. Congratulations. Madam Chancellor, it is now my honor to introduce the presentation of the RBC Academic All-Canadian portion of the ceremony. The Academic All-Canadian Award is presented to student athletes who in the previous academic year achieved an average of 80% or higher while playing competitively in their sport. Announcing the athletes today being recognized will be Lou Perro, Manager of Student Athlete Acknowledgement and Development, Presenting the awards, I have the honor to introduce Ms. Annie Bushman, Regional Vice President from RBC, along with Lakehead's newest alumnus, Dr. Ron McLean. Good afternoon, and uh, Madam Chancellor, Professor McPherson, Dr. Ron McLean, platform party, distinguished guests, coaches, and athletes. It is truly my honor to introduce the 2017-2018 Academic All-Canadians. We are very proud of the fact that 30% of our student athletes achieved this honor this past year. Now for the introductions. Men's basketball, Michael Poirier. Women's basketball, Caitlin Andrea. Men's hockey, Dylan Butler. Daniel Dalpaggio. Joseph Leonidas. Sam Shute. 
men's and women's wrestling, Kevin Leatherdale. Jacob Luxick. Marco Palermo. Delaney Johnson. Kara Nixon. Alexandra Sawyer. Men's and Women's Nordic Skiing. Connor McGowan. Colin Penzoal. Noah Thompson. Jeffrey Waney. Holly Fleming. Men's cross country and track, Dylan Burry. Jefferson Gordon. Men's track, Benjamin Plozai. Women's cross country and track, Haley Morisot. Women's volleyball, Stasha Bates. Haley Kearns. Rachel Sweezy. Sierra Zarn. And it's truly my pleasure to introduce Rihanna Geisel, who will speak on behalf of the Academic All Canadians. Rihanna. Good afternoon, Chancellor McLeod, President McPherson, Dr. Ron McLean, distinguished guests, coaches, and athletes. My name is Rihanna Geisel, and it is an honor to be here representing the Academic All Canadians this year. When I was asked if I would be willing to speak today, there was no hesitation in my answer. Thunder Bay, more so Lakehead, has been my home for the better part of the past four years, and I have grown up here and accomplished more in the past four years than I had ever thought possible. One of those accomplishments is being an academic All-Canadian four times. This accomplishment means more than having good grades. It is more than being smart, studying a lot, and attending your lectures. Receiving this award is the result of a year, sometimes more, of hard work, sacrifices, and discipline. So what does it mean to be an academic All-Canadian? All of those things matter, but there are two specific things that come to my mind when I try and sum it up. The first is time management. There are 24 hours in a day, and the average person is said to allocate this time to sleeping, eating, working, commuting, and the rest they will leave up to leisure. However, student athletes are of a different breed. We will get those same 24 hours, but spend it quite differently. Our days consist of practice, weights, classes, homework, lots of eating, and fitting in a quick nap on the couches outside of the ice room. And if you're Mike Poirier, you'll spend the odd night reading the entire textbook for the exam you're writing the next day. I would be lying to you if I said it was easy. I have lost count of the amount of times my day has started with a 6 a.m. practice or workout and ended late at night at the library. However, the second piece of the puzzle to being an academic All-Canadian is support. And here at Lakehead, we're lucky to have a wide variety of people here to help. We have the Writing Center to help clean up our essays tutors to teach information from a different perspective, and the Success Center to help us with study tips and organization. And that's just to name a few. 
Most importantly though, we have the support of our teammates and coaches with us here today. The greatest part of being a student athlete is that your team is with you on and off the court. Our teammates are the ones with us in practice, in class, and crammed beside us into the booths at the library. They are the first ones to offer us the lecture notes we missed when we were on the road, the first ones to help us study, and gives us, give us tips and tricks for classes, and they're also the ones to celebrate our successes. When you combine time management with the support, you get a recipe for success. I want to end today by saying congratulations to President McPherson on her induction and Dr. Ron McLean for receiving an honorary doctorate. Thank you to all those who have been involved in academics in some way at Lakehead. And lastly, congratulations to my fellow academic All-Canadians. Good luck to all new and returning athletes in your studies this upcoming year. Thank you. Congratulations to all of our student athletes. Madam Chancellor, to honor the achievements of everyone we've celebrated today, I now have the distinct privilege to introduce the Chi Anamiki traditional drum group from Fort William First Nation and drum carrier, Dr. Angus.
Before closing this convocation, I would like to offer my personal congratulations to each of the individuals being recognized today. To the all-Canadian student-athletes, let me extend my best wishes for continued success and for personal fulfillment as you pursue your future goals. To Ron McLean, may I say how honored we are to now be able to claim you as a member of the Lakehead University community. And to Dr. Moira McPherson, let me offer not just my congratulations on your formal installation as president, but on behalf of Lakehead University and the students and the communities it serves, my thanks to you for being ready to accept the responsibilities of leadership in these times of challenge and change. I am delighted that the Board of Governors has recognized that you are exactly the right person to take Lakehead University forward. I know you have the vision and the commitment to reach towards the goals that the university has set. I know that you will seek the support of the many communities of people who are essential to the achievement of those goals. And I know that you will have that support wholeheartedly as you will have mine. I now declare this convocation closed. <laughs>